Good evening, everyone. So today is going to be something like a podcast. I'm not going to show my video. Um, I'm just going to talk tonight. Uh, but yes, so give me one moment. Good evening, everyone. All right, cool. So it's going to kind of be like a podcast tonight. Uh, God dropped a word on me as I was preparing for Bible study on Tuesday, as you're all aware. And if you're not, you're about to become aware. Um, We will be discussing David's story in its entirety over the next few weeks. Um, I think his story is very powerful. As we are going through David's story, we will also be talking about spiritual gifts Um, Because we are in a month of harvest and we, uh, God is going to start stirring up spiritual gifts. And so I want people to be knowledgeable about the different spiritual gifts. We're also going to discuss the five-fold ministry. Um, So be prepared for that. Those will be our discussions on Thursday. Um, And then if we are able to link our Thursday discussion to David's story, which um, the Holy Spirit did release to me that we'll be able to do that, you'll see the connection. So as I was getting more acquainted with the prophet Samuel, I uh, wanted to kind of get, you know, a better understanding of Saul because David's story and Saul's story are very interconnected. And I wanted to understand what the difference was between Saul and David. Why could David make, you know, a lot of mistakes and still, you know, be who David was to the Lord and what Saul did to make God so angry, right? Um, And so I, you know, read a little bit of his story. And so if you look at the comments, I went ahead and dropped the verses that we will be reading today. Uh, Mom, are you prepared to read? Yeah, I can read. Um, I just have to get my... I'm still preparing something in the kitchen. Give me just a second. To if you're not prepared to read, it's fine. I'll just read. I, if you're doing something, it's fine. Um, you want to just start off and I can help with it? That's fine. All right. So as I, like I said, I've already posted what those verses are so that you can follow along. So starting verse, first Samuel 15, verse one through three. So it says, Samuel said to Saul, I am the one the Lord sent to anoint you king over his people, Israel. So listen now to the message from the Lord. This is what the Lord Almighty says. I will punish the Amalekites for what they did to Israel when they waylaid, waylaid them as they came up from Egypt. Now go attack the Amalekites and totally destroy all the belongings to them. Do not spare them. Put to death the men and the women, the children and infants, cattle and sheep, camels and donkeys. Okay, so he was anointed. He was told who he was going to be, what his calling was, and then the Lord gave him instructions. So like I said, the month of October is definitely instructions for those who are reaping a harvest. Um, So now I'm going to read verse nine. It says, but Saul and the army spared Agag and the best of the sheep and cattle and the fat calves and the lambs, everything that was good. Those they were unwilling to destroy completely, but everything that was despised and weak, they totally destroyed. Verse 11. So as you can see here, the Lord anoints him, told him what to do. And then they literally didn't listen. They left, they spared things that they felt were good and destroyed things that they thought were weak or um, not good. Um, Things that they were willing to destroy and then things that they weren't willing to destroy, they kept. Okay. So then the Lord comes to Samuel and says, I regret that I made Saul king because he turned away from me and has not carried out my instructions. Samuel was angry and he cried out to the Lord all that night. 
early in the morning, Saul got up and went and met, uh, Samuel got up and went to meet Saul, but he was told that Saul had gone to Carmel. There he had set up a monument in his own honor and turned and gone down to Gil Gilgag, Gil Gilgal, Gilgal. When Samuel reached him, Saul said, the Lord blessed you. I've carried out the Lord's instructions. But Samuel said, what then is the bleating of sheep in my ears and the lowing of cattle that I hear? So even when you think you're getting over on prophets, on God's prophets, just know you are not. The Lord will reveal what he needs to reveal. So he's going back and forth with Samuel, Saul and Samuel going back and forth. And then this is what Saul says. The soldiers took the sheep and the cattle from the plunder, the best of what was devoted to God in order to sacrifice them to the Lord, your God of Gil Gilgal. But Samuel replied, does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord? That was a question. To obey is better than sacrifice and to heed is better than the fat of rams. So then Saul is listening. He's listening to the prophetic wisdom. And then he says, then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned. I have violated the Lord's command and your instructions. I was afraid. Underline that because that is the whole purpose of today's lesson. He was, I was afraid of the men, and so I gave in to them. So that was what the Lord released to me, the power of fear, the power of fear. And he wanted me to release this because we're about to enter into a harvest. So we need to be prepared for enemy attacks. And one uh, thing, one tool in the enemy's toolbox is fear. He loves to use fear. Fear. There are three reasons why he loves to use fear. One, the results of fear ends in you disobeying God. As you can see right here, Saul disobeyed God because he was scared of the consequences of his actions in front of his, in other words, staff, right? That's technically was his staff. The second reason why the enemy loves this tool is because it re the results end in you losing faith in God. He should have had the faith in God that if God commanded you to do a thing, it doesn't matter what anything around you is like. If God says do it, you do it. Samuel, for example, if you read in verse uh, in chapter 16, God goes and tells him to go see Jesse and anoint one of his sons as king. He's like, well, I'm a little scared to do that. But he goes before God. He lets God know, look, man, I'm scared to do that because Saul might kill me if I go and anoint another king. And God gives him instructions on what he can do to prevent that from happening. And by him telling God his fear, God was able to instruct him on what he needed to do so he doesn't have to worry about that fear. The third reason why the enemy loves this tool is that the results end in you sinning against God. And we all know that sin leads to death, right? So if, if he can use one thing that can have you disobey God, have you lose faith in God and have you sinning, of course he's gonna do that. Of course he's gonna use that weapon of warfare. And I told y'all, um, I think it was last week when he dropped that the Lord, that the enemy is going to relinquish fear Oh, hallelujah. I even forgot about that. He uh, released that prophetic word that the enemy is going to be releasing fear in the atmosphere. And that as long as you are delivering, that you are going to be in deliverance, you won't have to worry about anything because God will spare you of his wrath. So what I want to do is I want to go down each thing and talk about why these three results of fear are bad. So the first result, like I said, was disobeying God. And mommy brought me to this verse. It's Ephesians 5 and 6, right? Ephesians 5 and 6. If you can read now, mom, that would be great. You can read that verse for me. Oh, she's not ready. It's fine. So basically disobedience 
leads to God's wrath, right? Um, and you can read more about that, like I said, in Ephesians 5 and 6. So I'm going to read what it says. It says, let no one deceive you with empty words for because of such thing, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Do not be disobedient in this time. Okay. When the, when this spirit of fear is relinquished, you need to still be obedient to what God says to you. And these are prophetic words. I'm telling these are prophetic instructions. Be prepared. Be prepared for the spirit of fear and be prepared to be obedient. Okay. Number two, you start to lose faith in God. We are in a mix of a pandemic, y'all. This was the first uh, level of fear that he released. It's going to get worse. I said it, I said it, I'm gonna keep saying it. Things are going to get worse. And so because of that, you cannot lose your, your faith. Faith, again, is trusting in things that you cannot see. God is always working on your behalf, know that. And because he's always working on your behalf, he needs you to do your part. And the way you can do your part is by being obedient. Do not let the devil deceive you in this hour. And then that last point uh, results in sinning. We all know that sin leads to death. I already talked about that. We don't want to be sinning when we're supposed to be in the midst of a, a huge revival. You have to remember the Christian faith has lost its power. And I, we talked about that a lot in the revival that I went to this week. We have lost our power. We have lost our, um, in a way, our good record, okay? People don't trust Christians anymore. People don't seek advisement from Christians like they used to anymore. Um, and that's a problem. And they're not doing it because we come across as hypocrites. We can't be sinning in a way. Um, the pastor talked about this uh, last night, premeditated sin. You're sitting in church, but thinking about what you're gonna do right after church, how you're gonna sin next. You have to be working to live a righteous life. Um, I, I I thought I was going to uh, comment a lot tonight. I ended up, um, you know, basically doing this on my own. Um, that's really all I had to say tonight. There wasn't much more I needed to say. I just, God dropped this word on me and I had to share it. Again, there's no video because I wanted it to kind of be like a podcast uh, tonight. But I hope you heed to this word because this is the second time God has dropped instructions, obedience, and fear. Okay, so th this is the theme for the month. Okay, um, October's prophetic word. Um, I think uh, moving forward, I think on Fridays I will release prophetic words as they're given to me. But I'm also going to start trying to release a prophetic word for the month because um, it seems like the Lord has been doing that. Um, and I've been feeling an overflow of just instructions and things that I need to do. And when it falls heavy on me, when I feel a weight on it, I feel the urge to say something. So I hope this was a blessing for you guys. Um, I'm actually going to read another verse just because it is um, somewhat of a, um, a prayer. So I'm going to read it and then I'm going to go into prayer. So it says, we demolish arguments in every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ, hallelujah. And we will be ready to punish every act of disobedience once your obedience is complete, hallelujah. And that's Paul talking in 2 Corinthians 10, five through six. Very important. So we're going to go into prayer. Father God, we are so grateful that you woke us up this morning, Father God. We are so grateful for your um, sufficient grace. We are so grateful for your faith 
in us hallelujah you have faith in us that we're going to revive your people and we're so glad that you have called us to do your works father god father god we are um wanting to just say hallelujah to you the highest praise hallelujah you are great you are merciful in the name of jesus and we're going to repent for anything that we did because we're always doing something so show us what areas we need to reflect on uh, allow your word to be a mirror for us to reflect and Father God, I'm going to come before you and ask that you allow us to have that spiritual sensitivity for um, what is going to go on, what um, the spirit of fear is trying to conjure up. Father God, we ask that you uh, cast down the imaginations. We cast out any rebellion that's in us. Father God, we want to get rid of that struggle. We choose to serve one master and you're that master in the name of Jesus. And we're asking that you also... Um, start to stir up our spiritual gifts as we start through this whole month learning about these gifts start to stir them up show us what we are supposed to do and how we are able to do it lead us to our spiritual mentors father god you have placed beautiful men and women of god on this earth to guide the youth and so now the millennials and the generation z are standing up to be the face of christianity we want to be the face of the revival father god use us in the name of jesus in any way you uh, see fit father and we also ask that you start to bridle our tongues allow our mouths to be the PA systems of our hearts we ask that you work on our hearts and our minds pour your spirit align our hearts and minds with you father god so that we may start to show people who are non-believers what it's like to be a believer a true believer an actual christian that is following your words to the t father god in the name of jesus we speak these things we ask these things we request these things amen 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 thank you Sorry, jesus mama. i just had to go with the spirit but we love you peace we and love blessings. you guys peace and blessings and we'll talk to you soon yes bye